Be here, 88.5 FM WVUF, Fairfield, Connecticut. Joe Kelly doing it to it with another edition of The Upper Room. And we want to wish everybody a nice holiday season right here at the university. Two more days to go for finals right outside the studio. A lot of people studying, and uh, hopefully everybody's not stressing too much. We've got a great show in store for you, plenty of, of music, new music as well. And uh, coming up next, a great friend of ours. We've known him over 10 years plus. He uh, hails from Rochester, New York, originally makes his home in Southern California now where he is awfully busy producing and also writing and recording his own music. Uh, his name is Kenwood Anderson. He's been a special friend to our show when he was with Rio Soul and also with Solo Career. He has two new albums out. Just uh, drop them on us. The first one is, is great for the season right now. It's called Christmas Dreaming and also uh, an album with his buddy Nate Morton, who's uh, the drummer with the voice band uh, on NBC. And they have a new album, Funky Jazzy Stuff. So we welcome once again our friend Kenwood Anderson. How you doing, Kenwood? Good, Joe. How are you? I'm, I'm doing well and uh, nice to hear from you again. And, you know... I, First off, I, I didn't ask you off air. How, how have you been dealing with uh, the fires out out your way? Oh man, um, well I've been lucky because I I live in an area that's not close to any of the fires. Um, but it, it's it, it seems the fires happen every year. It seems at some point or another. And this this year was a, a little scarier because it was in different areas. The fires were in different areas that don't usually happen, and and it was. And, you know, it's just you feel bad for everyone who's affected. And I know some people that had to evacuate and everything. So it's it's always stressful. It's always a, a sad time. But, you know, things are, seems like every, everybody I know is certainly okay. And, and it, it worked out okay. And the firefighters are just amazing, amazing people. That's all I can say. Right. Yeah. You, you've How long have you been out in L.A.? Because I know you, you schooled here on the East Coast as well, right? Yeah, um, uh, I still consider myself an East Coast person, but uh, but I've been living in L.A. for 24 years. Okay. Yeah, 24. Right. <laughs> so, but, you know, so I, I consider L.A. home, but I'm still connected back East. Now, one of the albums uh, we were talking about, Christmas Dreaming, uh, this is mm -hmm. perfect to pick up for the season. You can uh, go to Kenwood's website, Kenwood's Music. Dot com also uh, available through CD Baby and I'm sure all the other online sites as well, right? Yes, sir. It's uh, it's on iTunes and Amazon and uh, and yeah. I mean, you can even Google my name, Kenwood Anderson, and it'll come up in all the different forms, <laughs> the different stores, and everything that it's available. So uh, yeah, it's 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 uh, cool that it's it, the internet makes it easy to find. <laughs> right. Exactly. <laughs> Uh, you know, th this record, you, you mix some originals in with uh, time-tested classics. When did you first get this idea you want to you tackle a, a, a Christmas record? Um, well, I've been wanting to do it for a couple years, um, and I was busy doing other albums and, and projects, and I kept saying, okay, next year I'll do it, next year I'll do it, next year. <laughs> and then... Um, Finally, um, I actually released this album last year, 2016, but it was yeah. so, there were delays and stuff, and there was it was so late in the game that I didn't have a chance to really tell everybody about it. So, um, but yeah, I've been wanting to do it for a while, and um, I had, you know, like two years, I was literally thinking about what song should I do, and I, you know, I looked up like every Christmas song that was out there, and I made a list, and then I would just narrow them down, like which songs were my favorites that I wanted to do, which songs should I absolutely not touch? Mm -hmm. <laughs> you right. know, I, I didn't want to ruin the songs or, or, you know, do them in a wrong way. And, um, you know, so I just kept over time just making a list and checking it twice. There's the bad pun. Okay, well, there we got go. that. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, and then I just narrowed it down to, you know, the songs that were my some of my, some of my favorites and the songs that I could do well. And also, my friends who helped help me perform these songs, I thought, like, you know, what songs would be really good for them as well. So, um, so I did a few, a few of the, yeah, the classic Christmas songs, and um, and then a, a 
two or three originals. And, you know, I've been a huge fan of Nat King Cole mm -hmm. my whole life, and his Christmas album is just the perfect Christmas album. So I wanted to do a little bit of a tribute to him and also do some music that is kind of a tribute to my parents and my grandparents, especially my grandmother. I have a huge connection with Christmas and with church and growing up. And so, um, so I do, you know, I tried to do the songs in a very traditional, tasteful manner. And, uh, and yeah, so I put a lot of thought into it. And I'm so glad that it came out. So I'm glad that it's done and that yeah, people right. are liking it. <laughs> and, and this is the official uh, release just came out November, around November, right? Yeah, November yeah. 1st or something like that. Right, right. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you enlisted your good buddy, uh, who, who, great friend of ours as well, Sean Barney Thomas. You guys were in, uh, Rio Soul. And, uh, tell us about, you guys have stayed in contact and, and recorded over these years. Yes. Um, Barney's just been a, a longtime friend and just amazingly talented guy. And, um, yeah, we were in Rio Soul together and a couple other bands and, um, uh, actually, I just did a gig with him and some cats last week, just filling in. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, we've always kept in touch and always done, you know, wanted to do stuff. In fact, we did this uh, album, uh, Groove Nation, um, Groove Nation Volume One, and it's out. It's uh, it came out a couple of years ago. We produced that album together and did it with a bunch of our friends. Um, and you know, and we're still going to do more stuff. And and um, Actually, uh, yeah. So, and I always, I always wanted to have him sing a couple of Christmas songs. I knew that this, these two songs, I have to have him sing, and can't have anybody else <laughs> doing it. He just, I just knew that he was. I just liked his voice on these these two songs, and uh, he was happy to do it. And he just, he just it was perfect. I mean, he just sent me the tracks. I was like, yeah, okay, we're done. <laughs> it's right. just, it's perfect. So, yeah, it was fun. Always fun working with Barney. Well, we're going to listen to one of those tracks you mentioned right now. It's uh, the Christmas song featuring Sean Barney Thomas and, of course, Kenwood Anderson from Christmas Dreaming. Go to kenwoodsmusic.com. And you're listening to The Upper Room with Joe Kelly here at WVOF. Kenwood Anderson will be back after this great song. Kenwood Anderson uh, tackling that classic song, the Christmas song, featuring Sean Barney Thomas on the vocals there from Christmas Dreaming. And Kenwood joins us once again and... Uh, yeah, you 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 uh, did not let that song slip. You did a great job on that one. <laughs> thank, thank you so much. And uh, I got to give a shout out to the guitarist uh, Shin Kawasaki. Okay, another guy I've played with for a long time, and he's another guy that just I love his playing, and he's just a super fun guy, extremely talented guitarist and singer. Um, and he's just one of those guys that just I had to have him play on this track as well and on the whole album um and yeah it's just it was it was fun it, this was an easy one an easy song to tackle because i just knew that i'm just going to do it like this with this kind of groove and i'm not going to change it up yeah. too much and uh so um yeah i just and my, my my friends made it easy i mean when they when they add their parts to it it really brings the song to life so it's uh yeah amazing <laughs> now, now you, you're a noted producer as well, and you know occasionally you post uh, some great clips, uh, a glimpse inside your studio. And uh, what, 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 what kind of uh, do, do you always source out and, and check out gear you want to bring into your uh, studio a lot? Yeah, I've always. Um, I, I don't have a lot of gear right now. It's, it's everything's in the computer for the most part, just because I have a, this tiny place here. Right. Um, but, uh, you know, later uh, when I can afford to, I'm definitely going to upgrade and just add a few more pieces. And, you know, being a musician, I've always been crazy about equipment and instruments and stuff. So I love, you know, all the analog stuff and the classic instruments. And then I love today's technology and what it can do. Um, it's really just incredible. And, and uh, so it's, um, and even though all the stuff, is mostly in the computer. I've got keyboards just plugged into the computer and, and record everything through there. But the software, I've got software that does emulations of classic analog equipment, and so you get that sound and that feel, and it's it's really amazing. Um, 
uh, and it's, I mean, you almost can't tell the difference, and it just adds so much warmth and, and life to the music as well. So, um, and it's inspiring, and it kind of makes you play better and, and mix things better, and, and uh, it's a lot of fun. Yeah, Kenwood Anderson is with us, his brand new records. He's got two records out, um, Christmas Dreaming and also Funky Jazzy Stuff with Nate Morton, his uh, collaborator and friend. And uh, let's talk about uh, Funky Jazzy Stuff. Nate Morton, of course, uh, drummer with The Voice television show, the drummer with uh, that, that successful show. What's it like recording, getting things done when he's got his own schedule and you have yours and finally get it together? How how long were you guys working on this? Oh, man, it, it's, it literally took a year um, uh, for various reasons. I mean, you know, Nate is super bu- super busy on on the voice and and you know anybody's seen the show it's a, just a high class production right. and there's a lot that goes into it and um and but it wasn't always you know waiting for him it's waiting for me to write the next song or re- record some parts of it. it took me a long time uh because i was doing other stuff and still working during the day and all that so it, it took a while um and it took a while for me to like write, find the right ideas to write. You write the right kind of music that I thought would work, mm-hmm. and you know a lot of it was inspired by Nate's personality and his energy. Um, and uh, I just, it, it, it's uh, you know, I definitely would not have written any of these tunes if he wasn't on the project. It's like it's all just a lot of his, just his vibe. And I kept saying, okay, what what could I write that Nate would have fun playing? And, you know, I, I always think that way. And so, um, yeah, it was like a year ago that he, he just asked me, so when are we going to do a project? Like, uh, okay, how about now? Uh-huh. <laughs> you know, he just literally out of the blue, because he liked my first album, right. um, Handful of Grooves, and then he just one day said, hey, man, we got to do something. I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> so so um, we talked about the kind of music that we wanted to do, and, and I would just, start writing stuff and then send him demos and he would give me feedback and, and, uh, we put it together and, um, um, and then just over time, uh, I did most of the stuff here in my home studio, um, composing and sending parts. And then, uh, and then, uh, we went to one of his friends, uh, Alan Hertz is a incredible drummer and producer and engineer um, nearby and, uh, he has a great studio. And so we went over there to record, uh, Nate's drum tracks. And, uh, it was just a roller coaster. You just hang on for dear life. Cause Nate is like, so he, they just brought his a game and so much energy and, <laughs> and fun. And just, we did two days of recording. Just, it's just, it was incredible. Just Nate was just fantastic at bringing his energy, bringing his creativity, learning. He didn't, he didn't even have a lot of time to learn the songs because he's so busy on his show, but he would just learn them and bring them together. And, uh, it just really, just really amazing. Um, just to perform just so much. And I mean, I was sweating by the end of the day. <laughs> he was just, he just had so much energy. And said, so, Oh, let me, you know, let me do one more take. I can do it better. You know, he, uh-huh. would just, he would just blow it out. And it was, uh, it was so much fun. And, um, so yeah, it was like a, a year process of just going back and forth and scheduling and more scheduling and and then uh, um, and then when we finally got it done, I mean, it just really um, uh, the the final thing was with the artwork. You know, the the album cover is, is unusual looking, and that was like a happy accident because I'd been designing this fancy looking you know album cover and my computer was Photoshop. They kept trying all this stuff. Oh, it just looks boring. And then Nate's wife, Nicole mm-hmm. came up with this illustration and they sent it to me and I looked at it and I just started laughing. I was like, okay, we're going with this. <laughs> it was just, <laughs> it's just, it makes people say, what the heck is that? That's and it right. just, it captures the fun that we had making this album. And it was just, it was just fun and silly and crazy. And, you know, and, and it just, it was crazy. I was, it was just fun. It really has been fun, the whole thing. <laughs> yeah, we're going to dive into a track right now from funky, jazzy stuff. Nate Morton and my special guest, Kenwood Anderson. This cut is called Funky. 
Uh, no, excuse me, Energy Drink Blues. Energy Drink Blues from Funky Jazzy Stuff. And uh, we'll be back with Ken Whitting. Energy Drink Blues. And that is another standout track from the new record, Funky Jazzy Stuff, Nate Morton, and my special guest, Kenwood Anderson. And, you know, writing titles for instrumental tracks, how, how do you do that? <laughs> um, well, because I'm a little crazy. That uh-huh. helps. Uh, <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> Um, yeah, I just, it just came naturally from working on this record and like every phone call with Nate or an email from Nate was, it would just giggle cause he's just silly and fun. And I just thought, you know, the music has to capture that fun and, and that sense of fun. And I was just starting to think of, you know, I, I don't know. I just started to think of goofy song titles and I just went with that. I said, okay, that's another rule for the album. We gotta have goofy song titles or strange song titles or something just to just to be entertaining i guess right. <laughs> so you drink uh energy drinks or uh i don't anymore right. i did okay. for a very long time but nate still does once in a while um and actually yeah that's what that's what gave me the title is what i remember he was drinking one at the session oh okay. and i was like <laughs> it just it sounded like it fit this particular track so yeah, it's great. He's got two new records out and uh, Christmas Dream, and we're going to play a couple tracks from that before uh, we we say goodbye. And, uh, hey, i got to ask you, big Star Wars fan, I know you are, right? Yes, yes. What, what, what's your latest take on, on the latest release? The Last Jedi, I absolutely loved it. Okay. I absolutely loved it. it, it it's a little bit different uh-huh. in, in a couple of spots, but... It also is very much Star Wars. It just, I was blown away. I can't wait to see it again. <laughs> you, you went opening night? We went uh, Saturday. Oh, okay. Uh, like a couple of days later, yeah. Saturday, 8 in the morning with with my buddy James, who's an amazing film composer. We went, we oh. went. Uh, oh, to see a movie speech. at 8 in the morning? They, they have Yeah. It? Wow. <laughs> That's a real fan. Yeah, we were messing around, you know. We had we had our Star Wars, you know, shirts on and everything. So, uh-huh. uh, yeah, it was it was great. It just, you know, it, I don't want to say anything. I'm not going to give any spoilers, but I loved it, and you know, yeah, going again next week. Yeah, <laughs> and, and and maybe if another release comes out, some some music from Kenwood Anderson, maybe slip something in from you, George Lucas. <laughs> yeah. yeah, get this to George, please. Yeah, that's right, yeah, right away. <laughs> <laughs> oh, another band you you work with, and and you sent us the DVD, the concert DVD of uh, the Real Deal band. That that was you guys really give a great performance. I want to thank you for sending that along. Uh, you've been working with uh, one of the singers from the band, right? Yeah, um, and some some of the videos of those songs are on uh, YouTube as well. Like on on my YouTube channel, there there's some of the clips on there. Um, yeah, and actually, that's the band that I, I just played a gig with last Saturday, just filling in for them. Um, but yes, um, the Real Deal band and, and the lead singer, Mark Deal, is uh, just a really great uh, singer, pop, R&B, uh, Latin. I mean, he's very versatile and just got a great voice and a uh, great songwriter. And we've been just starting to work on a new album for him. Um, so I'm hoping next summer mm-hmm. <laughs> we'll, we'll get it done. Um, we'll get it out and, uh, it's, it's going to be old school meets new school. It's going to be, you know, good songs with good lyrics and real performances. And, um, you know, that's, that's, that's what we're working on because we want it to be good and we want people our age to, uh, like it. <laughs> that's right. So, because uh, uh, we still like music, so there we go. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> there's a lot of us out there, and 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 even you know the the younger generation, they're listening, they're starting to listen to some of their parents' stuff, you know, and and uh, not all the time, but they do listen, and it's encouraging, mm-hmm. um, you know. Th- so it's it's uh, it's interesting, you know. There's so much music out there, so many different styles, and the great thing is you could kind of do whatever you want and get it out there and see if people like it. Um, and, uh, so, you know, I'd want to keep doing the kind of music that, 
that that I like that I grew up with, and and you know, and then we don't make don't want to make it sound old, but we just want to take that old school value of, of putting songs together, and then just have it be new. <laughs> yeah, and, and speaking of new, my guest Kenwood Anderson, uh, two new records, Christmas Dream, and we're going to play a uh, uh, couple cuts right now. Uh, we're going to play. Oh, Christmas Tree and Seg right into an original sledding, which um, it's great to have a couple originals on the record. And then we'll play, uh, let's see what we have queued up here. Lenny Gear from Funky Jazzy Stuff from Nate Morton and Kenwood Anderson. Uh, you can go to support independent music from Kenwood and Nate Morton, kenwoodsmusic.com. And uh, hey, Kenwood, thanks for coming by. You know, we've known each other for well over 10 years, right? Yeah, man, it's been it's been a while. It's, yeah. Uh, it's, <laughs> and I appreciate, really appreciate you always supporting and just always being a great guy. And uh, yeah, thank you so much for for doing this. Yeah, my pleasure. And and you you have been the featured Christmas holiday yeah. musician on our show. So that's you. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Well, uh, thank you, sir. Yeah. All right, Kenwood. Thanks so much, and uh, we'll talk soon. Thank you, Jim.